Galveston Island Convention Center. We are here for the uh, run-up to the BPA Conference Path to Indemnity 2022. This will be our second annual show. Uh, there's a lot of people around now, so we can't show a whole bunch of what's going on. What we can do is, is give you the rundown May 18th to 20th, 2022. We'll be having the second one. Uh, one of the things that, that tickled me so far, we began to do our sponsorship uh, and the, the main sponsors that we used last year. I think the mark of uh, success would be whether or not the people came back to advertise, especially without enticement. Uh, when we reached out to the, to the sponsors from last year, they had, the response was immediately yes, no questions asked, uh, which tells you that we brought about, uh, I'm not going to, as a business owner, I'm not going to dump my money into something that's not going to bring me a return. Uh, unless I decide to do that from the beginning as a charity event. This is obviously not a charity event. This is what we do for a living. This is what we're trying to teach the world to understand and do with us. Uh, so them coming back that quickly makes me feel like we hit the mark. Absolutely. Uh, we got a great lineup of speakers, some that were here last year. They're going to be presenting new material and different information. We have some new speakers. Um, they're going to be coming on board. Uh, I've been working with all of them to try to make sure they're going to hit different segments of the industry. That they're talking about. Um, we have some unique ones. Uh, a CPA is going to talk about accounting and different things like that. So, in our to... field, it's very hard to find an accountant who understands what it is that we do, especially when we get multiple, we may get a payment in 2019 and the claim may go to litigation, uh, and then we may not see another payment on that claim in 2021. But then that claim has to be opened back up and that payment brought back in, and it begins to get a little bit difficult on what's going on and how to show a bank that you're a viable business. Uh, and that's what we really need to do is to be able to show Republic adjusters and attorneys both. They need to have some type of financing mechanism because most people do not understand our business model. Uh, and without that understanding or an account who can put your books together in the way that they're supposed to be put together so that they can present them to somebody who would finance you, making you what? Now a viable business. So she will be here. That's Karen Maxwell. Um, she's our personal accountant for ourselves and the business as well. Uh, she'll be here speaking. And, you know, there's uh, a lot of great uh, attorneys, public adjusters, uh, experts, engineers, others. You know, one thing that's clearly obvious is right now the industry is changing a lot with policy language. I mean, damage course, is yes. damage, is damage, but the endorsements and the exclusions you're seeing in policies. So sometimes you need to have a very nuanced argument and you need to document it correctly to find coverage where there is coverage. Um, and so we're going to talk about all those policy changes that are going on, you know, cosmetic damage exclusions, um, you know, ACV only on the roofs, different things where, you know, you got to be ahead of the curve when it comes to documenting that damage and setting it up correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is a policyholder advocate conference, basically, what we're here. You're going to learn to run a better business model. You're going to be better prepared to go out and, and serve the policyholders and be a better advocate having you come here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and our measuring stick that uh, Cal, Melanie, and I did last year was, are we providing information that you can immediately take back and implement? We want it to be, you know, immediate feedback, um, and and that's what we're striving to do. And we did it last year, and we're going to do it this year as well. We want you to be able to walk in the door, spend three days at the conference, and before you get out of the first day, be on the phone to your people back at the office if they're not with you, or if they are having a meeting out in the hall, saying, "Hey, contact this client, do this. Hey, send over a demand doing this." Hey, change this to that. That should be going on just like it does in boot camp as we're moving forward through that conference where you're getting information that is helpful to everybody uh, that you can use immediately. It's, it's not about something that we, we're not trying to get you to bring claims to anybody. No, we're trying to get you to work the claims correctly. Maybe you won't have to bring them to anybody at all. But we know that the insurance company has the ability to say no. They do it very often. What we're trying to do is to make sure that if they tell you no, that you have recourse behind them telling you no. Uh, and that conference is a big part of the education of how to do that. Mm -hmm. If you listen to the testimonials from last year, I feel like that's a lot of what you hear from attorneys, public adjusters, expert witnesses, everybody saying they learned and they're better right now than they were before they came to the conference. And, and, and immediate ROI on, on what you did. Uh, Absolutely. And the, the, probably last but not least, we're practitioners brand man behind the deal is practitioner, public adjuster, uh, Derek, same thing, Sean and myself, bro, we're not media people, but we don't do this thing in front of the camera very well. So what you're getting from us is organic, it's real, uh, and it probably won't get much better than what this is. So if you're expecting a, you know, a high class, big old, that's not us. We're about content. 
we want to bring you the best content that we possibly can. We'll polish it the best that we possibly can without losing what that authenticity is. Mm -hmm. Got it. Absolutely. May 18th through the 20th. There was a whole lot of people standing around him his entire life telling him that he couldn't. Mm. He didn't listen. Mm. And that's one of my favorite parts. He didn't listen. You, you keep talking about what I can't do. And while you keep talking about what I can't do, I'm just going to go ahead and get it done. What about that. what about the people that claim uh, he's only doing it because he knows it's going to be good for business in the future? What, what, is that, that that's that's idiocy. We all have to make a living. Yeah, we can't live on air. Anybody that's got any sense knows that you have to earn a living. Uh, in, the, in the same breath, those people would criticize no matter what he did. Those are the people that you would buy a brand new Lexus give it to them and they go around the corner and they have a blowout and they blame their entire life problems on you because the car that you gave them had a blowout mm. they would be they would complain about anything that you did no matter what it is that that's a big life lesson quit worrying about those people mm -hmm. they're going to be people that complain no matter what um and and the reason why i ask that is because you have a network of uh, billions of dollars yeah one of the richest men in the world I, as far as the public adjuster boot camp, oh. uh, you have a network of o over a hundred people now. How many people so far have that been have graduated? Mm -hmm. uh, right at three hundred. And one of the things that I know from conversations we had, it was you was concerned that people were thinking you were only teaching this because in hopes of future Look at you business. Things back around. You're such a good interviewer, man. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. appreciate it, man. You're such a good complimenter, Kyle. <laughs> so, so, uh, so in, in that essence. For the people in the camp, even though that's not why you're doing it, is there nothing that they that that they have access to because they went through the camp? I'm not quite sure what you're what you're asking. What to the people that might think because you made it obvious that you're not trying to sell them on any future stuff, is there anything that maybe they should know that they have access to? You have access to us. Uh, in general, uh, and whether that access looks like the, the graduates network on Facebook, an email, a phone call, or if you need employment, then you should reach out to us if that's what you need. No, nobody that's been to the to the boot camp uh, should be hurting. Uh, the, one of the, the main things that we made the boot camp for is to make sure uh, that the people that were coming into the profession had sustainability because of the network. They were able to go do estimates. They were able to do final demands. They were able to do any number of things that need to be done inside of the claim and get paid for it right away. Uh, we have a contingency face based model, meaning we're not ever going to get paid until the claim you know, pays. So that may be six months, two years on many of these claims simply because the insurance carriers make money on the float. So trying to give them an alternative to go make immediate money while you might not be making as much as what you would doing the full claim, uh, you still make an income and you're able to put money in your pocket, which translates to food in your belly. Money in your pocket, food in your belly. And bills paid. Yes. Bills paid. 